So in this video, we're going to uh, pull the chain case cover off. And we're going to uh, change out three things in here that are known uh, issues with the sidewinders and the T-cats for the uh, 998 turbo. And that is uh, the upper gear bushing uh, has premature failure on some machines. Uh, the plastic shift forks that shift into the reverse, I'm changing those out to a DMC brass. And then the third thing is uh, the we're going to change the steer roller out on the chain tension idler and we're going to put a precision EFI shoe what they call it's a some kind of a plastic material so we're we're going to do all that and if you're interested in it stick around this is Riley and I'm sometimes that's Riley right there uh, this is Riley and I'm sometimes <laughs> I'm Riley no wait this is Riley and I so I know it. Yeah, you tell them. You tell all your fans. Right? This is Riley. And I'm so Alright, good boy. Yeah, he good boy. Alright, so now that we got uh, the belly pan all done, next we're gonna unhook everything. Un unhook this hose, unhook this hose and we're going to get into the chain case. So we're going to uh, we're going to pull the chain case off. So we'll um, unhook all the wires, and then we'll go around the chain case and take all the black bolts, not these chrome ones, the black ones. Uh, we'll go around and loosen those all up, crack the case, let that drain, and then we'll pull the chain case cover off. We'll have to pull these hoses off. So stay with me. So first thing we gotta do is unhook the, push this tab in. And yeah, we got that unhooked. What else we got here? Oh, here's another plug. It's for the reverse. Unhook that. Let's see if I can do this without cutting the zip tie. Come on. Screw it, I'm cutting the zip tie. I gave you a chance. Nope. All right, so let's see, what else we got on the plug? Sensor for the, there. There's all that. That's going to be a six millimeter. Let's see, where can we put this? Get that out of the way. Okay, we'll unhook this oil line and we'll draw all the uh, oil out of that because I didn't drain this yet when I installed the <clears throat> easy oil change. We'll get this down. Unhook the Come on. Come on. There we go. Ooh, it's got oil in it again. Woo okay, I got a rag under there. Now we gotta unhook this one. And I'll use my uh, vacuum pump to suck the oil out of this one. This is the one when you do an oil change, you just gotta draw the oil out of it. Okay. 
get to all the black all the black headed uh, and this is a T30 and I'm just gonna break them all loose let the case come out and then it'll drain. There's two down here. We're going to want to pay attention to uh, torque specs when we put this one on, when we put this back on, because it's only plastic and we don't want to break them. break the housing so and a little cover First one we gotta do is we gotta get to this screw right here. So let's get that. T30.
So those bolts are right there. There's one, and there's one. Get that one out. Got that one. I got this one. I gotta get out. So this right here and this spring-loaded piece. So we're gonna have to grab right a hold of this and pull this out, and then pull this out. Won't lose that spring. And that goes in there like that. And it looks like this higher piece sits this way. So. Keep in mind this, this piece right here faces in, this side's flat. So I just noticed this side is different. So keep that facing in. But now we should be able to pull this out. This should have an O-ring on it. Yep, there's double O-ring. All right. Now we should be able to pull this off and <clears throat> there's gonna be a, okay. So now when we pull this off, we wanna account for that spacer that's gonna possibly fall off on that upper gear. We will see. Yeah, right here. That goes right here. You don't wanna lose that. Here's the inside. So we'll set this aside for now. Get this all cleaned up. I guess these get so much buildup on them that they'll wear right into the case. I've seen photos. So when you take these this off to clean it, make sure you wipe all these magnets off. There. So now here's your there's your uh, reverse. <clears throat> Here's your adjuster. So this is known to have issues. And on this, these plastic pieces right here tend to fail. So I have the, G the DMC um, brass equivalent that I'm gonna snap on here. So I'm gonna be installing those and I'm going to install the upper gear. I'm gonna replace that as well. So. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we'll pull off this snap ring. Maybe. There's that. Now this this should slide off. <clears throat> so you don't want to lose this. So you're going to want to set this aside. There's your spacer between your uh, cover and your gear. So you're going to want to keep track of that. And then this whole thing should slide off as one. Take a look at that. Oh, there's a spacer in the back too. So you're gonna want to keep track of that. I'm gonna put that back on the shaft. I'm gonna put that back on there so I don't lose it. So now this is your reverse gear, the actual activator. that so we're going to be changing these two plastic uh, buttons out
Hopefully that doesn't fall apart. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the shafts out with it, and it don't, then it won't fall out. There, I'm going to take it out like that, and then I don't lose the spacer in the spring. Set that aside. <clears throat> so now I got to get to this gear right here. So I'm going to pull this snap ring off. Let's see what do we got. We got a. Yeah. You know what? I'll put that right there. I'll leave that there. All right, so there's a spacer. Keeps track of that. So now that we got this set off, we got to pull this set off so I can change this top gear because there's a known bushing that fails. And I got uh, I got a uh, upper top gear that's going to replace this. So we'll back off the pressure on the adjuster take all the pressure off that See, this is spring loaded that must be why they tell you to run it in one and a half or all the way to touch and then back it out one and a half turns because it's spring loaded because i always wondered that so we'll take the pressure off and we'll move these out see if i can sneak this back behind there and there now we'll take these off Oh, I'll just lay that right there. So this is what I... Alright, this has got a spacer in the back. So I'm going to put this back on. I don't lose it. Hang that back up. Now I'll go get my new gear. Put that in. So this is supposed to be a 24 tooth. So we'll see if it matches up. Yep. Thundercats take come stock with a 24. And the Sidewinders, I believe, come SRXs, uh, come with a 2248. This comes with a 2450. So 24, tooth, or 24 tooth on the top, 50 tooth on the bottom stock. And then uh, Yamaha Sidewinders, SRXs, they come with a 22 tooth, 48 tooth. This is a, um, a bushing that's supposedly supposed to wear. Um, Hurricane Machines, a brand new uh, top gear and presses in a needle bearing which is supposed to have uh, a lot more longevity. 24 tooth, just verify 24 tooth, 24 tooth, so we're good. All right, so now we can put this back together. Oh, I know what I want to do. I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put some brand new um, chain, synthetic chain lube inside the bearing. Get that all soaked. I don't want that to start out dry. There. 
So now I will hang this up on here. And we'll slip this back on. And get this chain tensioner out of the way. Oh, you know what? We gotta we gotta change this out. Okay, before I forget. I'm gonna I'm going to pull this out so I might as well drop this off. Let's see how what, what this takes to get, get out here. Oh this is gonna be fun. It's all spring loaded. So it's going to go in like that. That'll be fun getting back in. So the long, so the long piece goes down. So we'll remember that. So this is the piece that we got to change out. That's the piece that's known to fail is this right here. All right, so we got to pull this apart. So I got, uh, Two T30s, because I don't know if I gotta hold on to the other side of this or not. This should be interesting. Ugh. Which one broke loose? Because I don't know how this comes apart, so I'm assuming that we loosen up one. And then loosen up the other one. I don't know. All right, so that had factory Loctite on it, so that's a good thing. <clears throat> Just got to keep working it back and forth. All right, so there's that one. That one's loose, loose. So let's snug that back up. Now we'll do this side. Get the Loctite moved off it. So what I ended up doing was just running the bolt each side. I'd, I'd run it out, then I'd run it back in, tighten it up, run this one out, run it back in, because one wants to turn the whole thing once they, one side loosens up. So I just ran it in and out about five times on each side, and now it's loose enough where I can get the whole thing out. All right, so let's see what's in here. All right, so what do we got? Oh, we got a needle bearing. So we better wait to see what this shoe looks like. All right, so we got a Precision EFI idler shoe. Just like on vehicles, they have the time and chains. They run on this type of material in a truck engine or whatever. So that's what this is. And instead of having a roller, this is supposed to be quieter too. So I'll put that in like that. So this must be this needle bearing goes inside this. I wanna be careful I don't lose this needle bearing. So I don't know if it's gonna fall out or not. Oh, it doesn't take the needle bearing, it just takes the shaft because it doesn't spin. So, all right. So we'll just take the inside of this out and this sleeps, slips in there like that. All right. And then this goes, so this is gonna be like that. So this is gonna be just like that. Okay, we'll set this aside. That's the stock roller with the needle bearing in it. And you just put that, cause this doesn't spin, it doesn't need anything. So now we got a uh, Loctite. You don't want this thing coming loose, so.
got her all snugged up. Tighten it. There, now she'll flop around like a fish. She'll flop around like a fish, but she won't come loose. Okay, so now we got to put the spring in here. This is the idler. We got to put the spring so the long part goes in here. And there, like that. There goes a mosquito. So that goes like that. So how do we get... How do we get this down and around? Let's try pushing this with a piece of plastic. Like that. So I don't damage the case. Just like that, I'm thinking. All right, I think it worked. Now let's get the chain back on before it changes its mind. That's our new top gear. out of the way and get that chain in there. Okay, so now that we got that in, now we gotta put we gotta put this spacer back on. Snap ring back on after that. There. There's that. All right, so now we got to hang these gears on. magnet wants to grab this one at the bottom. So now that we got this on, we can't uh, forget to put our uh, spacer on. Uh, snap rings back on, everything's locked in. New upper uh, top gear is on with uh, roller bearing in it. Spacer, uh, snap ring, new shoes on. Remove the steel roller and put the shoe in. Loctite red on both sides. And then once we, we get everything we can adjust that and we got to still do the we still have to do the upper we still have to do the upper shift fork so we'll just set that there for now uh, so we're going to go over to the bench and we're going to change out those plastic um, shift fork ends to the brass so here's our shift fork for reverse We'll get a little screwdriver and we'll pop these off. If we can. <laughs> Looks like it wants to fight us. Wink! There goes one. So these are the bronze ones, and these are the ones that after a while will break from the heat. So we'll put that on. If 
probably going to have to use a pair of pliers. Let's get the other one off. All right, so we got both plastic ones off. Now we just got to get the metal or the brass ones on. Let me grab a little pliers. All right, so they're going to be pointing out so they can set in this groove right here. They hook right onto that. We'll just put that like that. Oop, we need a little bigger. Need to open these up just a little bit. There's that one, and we'll just squeeze them closed a little bit. Let's get the other one on here. just close this up one we'll just squeeze those closed just a little bit there there all right so that's ready to go back in okay so now that we got the the two brass shift inserts in. We'll put this on here like that. And then we'll put these two posts in this bracket and then slide this all on at once. Okay, so now that we got the, the shifter on and then uh, so what it does is when it when it calls to go in reverse, it pushes this over, then it goes over onto this gear. And then when you hit it back and forward, it slides back over and then it stays off. There's quite a bit of clearance in here, probably about a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> but that's how it works. There's your reverse, there's your forward. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark one of the flats on this bolt. Just so I know when I do my rotations. So right now, I'm going to bring that in till it snugs up, and then I'm going to back it out one and a half, and that should get me close. Then I'll check it once I put the chain case on or the cover on. So there's my flat. Right now, it's chain is tight, so now I'm going to back it out one and a half so there's one and then I'm going to bring it around a half and then I think they had a mark on this from the factory and this and this is spring loaded so once I lock that in it should be good and it is tight once it has the put you know the cover on it it'll hold it so we'll go over there for now and then I'll reset it once I put the cover on okay so something I learned this is the new one that I just put in I uh, sprayed this off to clean it clean this seal and I used uh, some cleaner and as soon as I did, it swelled up and I couldn't get it back in. So luckily I bought a new one and here's the number. It's a genuine, genuine uh, Articat <clears throat> chain case cover seal. It's 3602-079. And that one's junk. So I'm lucky I bought one just in case. I didn't know what was gonna happen. 
Your best bet is if you're going to pull it off and reuse it, just put it right back on wet. Uh, you're going to want to put it right back on and then just clean it off once you get it closed. Because I tried cleaning the, uh, spraying it with cleaner and it swelled right up on me. So this is just a little tip. So let's see if we can get this on without having any issues. Also, make sure that you uh, account for this spacer right there. Make sure you got that back on. So you're going to want to see that when you go to put it on. Push that all the way. That's all the way. Now we got to get this on. So it looks good. We'll get a few started on each side. I'm thinking the wife's home. Yep, he is. Okay, now that we got that all installed, we have to torque these at 14 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. Fourteen foot-pounds. Fourteen, here we go, right there. You can see that or not. So 14 pounds. We'll do these in a crisscross pattern. Tighten a few of these first. Hey, one thing. I must be collapsing the. There's one. I'll tell you one thing, you wouldn't want to do this because you feel like you're going to pull something out. Must be the uh, the rubber gasket collapsing. Okay, so <clears throat> we got a little bit of a dilemma. So when I was going to torque all these black screws to put on the chain case cover, um, the service manual says to torque these at 14 foot-pounds well I went around got them almost all done and then that one on the bottom snapped so I'm just gonna give you a heads up that 14 foot-pounds so when I go I went and bought brand new screws all the way around and I'm gonna redo everything put brand new screws and then I'm gonna start out torquing them to 12 foot-pounds and then I'll go by how how it feels because as I was torquing them, I always, I, I almost felt like it was stretching the bolts. So it ended up snapping one. So um, I got a, I'm gonna use a quarter inch torque wrench this time, just to see, just so I'm not getting so much 
uh, leverage and we're going to start out at 12 foot pounds all right let's take these all back out Okay. Okay, so because I didn't use Loctite and it doesn't call for Loctite, sometimes you can just take a, a screwdriver that has a nice flat sharp edge on it and push against the screw and you might be able to back it out as long as there's not Loctite on it. If not, you're going to have to drill it. But typically you can, uh, like I say, you can just push real hard where the, where the broken off piece is. starting to come out while I looked out. Starting to, starting to slip. Come on. Sometimes you can use, uh, I've used in the past too, take a brand new pencil if you got to reach in there a ways and just push the eraser against it and you might be able to back it out too. I've used, the, you know, the eraser on a pencil. I think that's almost it right there. There it is. Whew. I got it. I'm throwing these all away. I don't want to reuse any of them. They're probably all stretched out from the 14 foot pound torque. Okay, let's try this again. Make sure you didn't lose your spacer. And all the seal looks good. Right, let's put this back on and we'll retorque. So the part number on those screws are 8468, 8468-625. see how that feels so I'm going to start out top bottom and I'm going to just crisscross so I'm just going to snug all these up and I'll do the same just kind of snug them up to like four okay well let's start out Let's go up. There's 12. I'll tell you one thing, I wouldn't want to go much farther than that. I think I'm going to stick with 12.
Okay, so I got them all. I, I torqued them all to 12. I, I, there's no way I'm going to 14 foot pounds like the, uh, like the service manual says. 12 is good enough. Cause you feel it, you just, the bolts don't feel right. So this, this chain case cover is against this now. So there's no gap in there. So I don't want to rip the threads out of it or snap the bolt off again. So we're good. I'm going to leave it at 12 and we'll go from there and I'll just keep an eye on it. Okay. So now we'll put all the hoses back on. All right, so all these clamps get get uh, this one, this one, and this one. I'll get torqued to 35 inch pounds. And we'll do the same with these two. <clears throat> and put the clamp right back where it was. And torque it to 35. Thirty five point three. One more. Now we got to get this one on down here. Okay, thirty five. Thirty five point three. So we got that, we got that, all these are torqued, and this is torqued, that's right. Okay, so now we got to take this uh, fill line plug out, and it is a 3 16 believe it or not, it's not metric. They got anything on it? Okay, so we fill 12 ounces in here until this start. It just starts to come out here, and then you know that it's full. And when you buy a synthetic chain lube from Articat, you got 15 ounces in it. So, and you just put it in until. It, Starts coming out. I think I'm going to put a rag under this. Let me put a rag under it just in case I don't catch it in time. Yeah, it's just barely running out now. So we're good. Set this at 60 inch pounds for this plug. 60 inch pounds. All right. So. 61 inch pounds. Okay. Done. Levels done. Now we got to put the reverse actuator in. 
Okay, so I just put a little light coat of grease on this. And you're going to want this facing down when it's fully rotated counterclockwise. So we'll push that in. See how that turned? So you're going to want to pull that back out. And you're going to want to make sure that's straight down when you push it back in. Okay, so when you put this in, and you turn it all the way counterclockwise, you know, all right? So you put this in and you turn it all the way, grab the track and spin it and listen. Hear that clicking noise? It's not in, it's not engaged back into forward. So if you, if you, uh, if you rotate this all the way to the left and you got your detent down and then you grab the track, hear that noise? So now if you come over here, and you watch the clutch. Watch the secondary clutch, and I'm gonna spin the track. It's not moving. That means it's not setting on the gear. So now, you wanna make sure this is turned all the way. You're gonna to wanna to grab it with something, and you're gonna just put a little pressure on it to the left, counterclockwise, and then spin the track, and you'll feel it drop in. There it goes. See now it dropped in? <clears throat> so now you'd have to pull this out and put it straight down, and it should go right back in like that. So now with this all the way to the left, you'll see that this is straight down. Now when you turn the track, you don't hear any clicking noise. And now when you turn the track, you're moving your secondary. So that's how you verify that you got that in right. So now that this is all the way to the left, that means it's in forward. And now you can put your detent in. So now that I got this all the way counterclockwise, I know that when I rotate the track, the secondary spins. Now I got to put the detent in with the spring. There, there. And once you get the detent in and you know it's all the way to the, to the left or counterclockwise, you're going to want to just give it a grab and make sure that it can't turn anymore. Okay, so now that when you're ready to put the, the actuator motor back in, it says to rotate this just to the right where the detent comes out this way, to the right. So you're gonna rotate this clockwise, just enough to get that out. And that it says it aids in the um, installation. We're gonna rotate it just like that, about 20 degrees it says. So then when you put it on and then turn it back to line up the bolts, you're actually putting it back into the detent. And make sure that you have this wire up in the air when you put it on. See, so once you put this in like that, and then you just put your screws in. You gotta put your guard back on. And let's see which way this goes. It must go like that. So it's back in the detent. Let me put this in. And these will be torqued to 36 inch pounds or four Newton meters. There's no Loctite on them screws, so I'm not putting any back on it. All right, so we have it set at 36 inch pounds. So we'll snug them up evenly. And this case is just delicate, so that's, I'm assuming that's why 36 inch pounds is more than plenty, I'm thinking. It's 36 point. 
six. Thirty six point six. Thirty six point nine. We got to bring all this down. Remember where everything goes? All right, let's see. What do we got? We got this that goes into here. And then we'll, <clears throat> we'll zip tie that with zip tied there. There it is. Right there. That one. This one, I remember this one was a sucker to get out. So that goes down in there. Make sure that, make sure you got your weather tight seal there all pushed up there nicely. There, that's locked in. And then this last one gets plugged into here. There. Now we'll just zip tie that, this one here. We should be good. Okay, we'll grab the last one. I can't remember if it was around that, so I'm going to go just around here. There. We'll just snip that off. Nice and smooth. All right, this goes behind here like that. That all goes back there like that. Okay, so I'm going to turn this in until I just finger tight until it stops. All right, so there's pretty much snug right there. So now I have to back this out one and a half turns. Now I'm going to mark this. We're going to turn it one and a half turns out. There's one, and then the half will be over here. It'll be one, two, three flats. And then we just tighten this up. And we'll hold this one, and then we just snug this up. Okay, we got our fluid in our chain case, all the <clears throat> Black screws are all torqued to 12 foot-pounds. I didn't go any higher than that because 14 is too much, I think. Uh, because I don't like the way the bolts feel and I ended up snapping that one off. So those are all torqued to 12. Got these back. They're all these three uh, clamps. These hose clamps are all torqued to 35 inch pounds. Got all our wiring hooked up. Got our uh, reverse gear set. <clears throat> Next we'll uh, We'll do, because we already got this oil tank drained and the lines. So now we got to go under our next uh, video. We'll go underneath, take the cover off. We'll take the, uh, change the oil filter, pull the little uh, drain plug on the bottom of the engine, get that oil drained, and then we'll fill this back up. And then we'll start going on to uh, getting uh, everything else installed. So stay tuned.